welcome or welcome back. If you don't know me, I'm Anna. I'm a psychologist in training. Today we're talking about the dark triad, which I can't believe I've never covered before. Technically, this video is a part of Halloween this year, which is dealing with the darker side of psychology as well as just lore. And also technically it's part of the Research Revealed playlist, which is where I pick one really interesting study and I talk about its findings and how we can apply it. I do want to be clear before we get started, when I say dark, dark triad, dark side of psychology, I use dark to mean the shadow, the nighttime. Neither of these things are bad, you know, if you've heard me talk on this channel ad nauseum about the shadow self, the shadow part of the psyche, if that's the case then you know it is not necessarily something evil or bad. Like the nighttime, it contains some dangers perhaps, some things that are frightening often because they're misunderstood and because it puts a lot of people out of their element. That is what I will be referring to when I use the dark triad as a term, but I do wonder if there is a better name for it than the dark triad. I do wonder if in 10-20 years we'll look back at the way people used these words and think, hmm, that was a little stigmatizing or pathologizing and so forth. So today's study is based on a 2017 meta-analysis of the dark triad, which in case you're not familiar with it, it is Machiavellianism, narcissism, and psychopathy. First, really quickly, let's just get down to what are these concepts in case you're not familiar. Dark triad is these three things that I just listed and are associated with transgressive and norm-violating behavior. In other words, behavior that could pose serious negative consequences for the people around us. Machiavellianism is a construct which refers to traits similar to Niccolo Machiavelli from Italy. He wrote a book called The Prince, which I actually have. My boyfriend got it for me because he said I might like it. And uh, I have it on my bookshelf. It's nowhere near my shortlist right now. But basically Machiavellianism is this idea that the ends justify the means, that you can manipulate people and do whatever you need to do to get power and to make sure that you and your family are secure. Even doing immoral, cruel things. Psychologists refer to Machiavellianism as being characterized specifically by a cynical disregard for morality and a focus on self-interest for personal gain. And narcissism, you know, for all that there is on narcissism on the internet, I'm sure a lot of it is misinformation. Narcissism is originally from the Greek myth of narcissism who fell in love with his own reflection in a pond and fell to his demise and drowned. It is associated with things like arrogance, self-obsession, egocentricity, vanity, and mistreatment of others. If we're going to talk about the actual DSM criteria, we're talking about things like arrogance, superiority, delusions of grandeur, uh, grandiose fantasies, entitlement, manipulative behavior, things of the sort. And psychopathy was coined by Cleckley in 1950, who noticed a pattern within some patients of antisocial behavior, diminished empathy and remorse, disinhibition, bold behavior, and sometimes superficial charm. By the way, let me know if you want a video on the difference between psychopathy and sociopathy because that is a very highly contested subject within the field of clinical psychology and one that honestly really annoys me to hear people use these words incorrectly, so let me know if that would be interesting. Antisocial personality disorder, the diagnostic label from the DSM-5, is slightly different from how we conceptualize psychopathy. It is much more behaviorally focused, much more based on breaking the law, things that a lot of like criminals are diagnosed with, not necessarily because of their personality, but because of their behaviors. And so I do want to be clear that psychopathy is not necessarily perfectly overlapping as a construct with antisocial personality disorder. It is much more of the cognitive affective traits that we would see with a psychopath. So the purpose of this study, which was a meta-analysis from 2017, was to evaluate in what way narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy are interrelated, to notice any gender differences in these traits, to see how these traits are linked to normal personality factors, and how they are correlated with psychosocial variables. So I'm going to give you a quick little summary and then we're going to go into each of the findings more specifically. And then I have some questions for you actually, because I thought this was a really interesting study. Kind of speaks to itself, don't have too many takeaways, but I do have some questions that I would love to talk to you about. And you know, it's so uncomfortable. I get up here and I just talk, talk, talk on my own, which 
you know, I almost never do in my real life, actually. I'm not a big talker at all. And so I would love for this to be a little bit more of a dialogue. First finding was that the dark triad traits are substantially intercorrelated. They are very linked to each other. They have a lot of overlaps. In terms of gender, they are somewhat more prevalent among men than among women. In terms of correlates, they are predominantly related to the big five personality factor of agreeableness, as well as the hexaco factor of honesty, humility. And the fourth finding was that they are generally associated with various negative psychosocial outcomes. So finding number one, there were robust correlations between the three, which is theorized is because they share that core manipulative interpersonal style. All three of these dark triad features have manipulative behavior at their core. Meta-analysis did find that narcissism is a more unique trait than Machiavellianism and psychopathy are. Narcissism and Machiavellianism are other-oriented, meaning that they're more concerned with trying to impact other people. Like through narcissism, you might say, I want other people to admire me, to think good things about me, to see me in a bright light. In Machiavellianism, it might be, I want to manipulate others to get my way. Versus in psychopathy, it is much more self-oriented, where you are describing personal characteristics such as, I tend to lack remorse. And this unintended similarity between Machiavellianism and narcissism may be what makes psychopathy so different in terms of the three. In terms of gender differences, men tend to be more narcissistic, the small to medium effect size. Psychopathy is very much more present in men than it is in women, although I do wonder how much of this is misdiagnosis because of stereotypes. And Machiavellianism is much more common in men as well. So dark triad overwhelmingly more common in men than in women. Finding number three, the personality traits correlated with the dark triad. There is a negative relationship between having dark triad traits and agreeableness. For all three of the dark triad personality styles, there was a statistically significant negative effect size with agreeableness, although this was stronger for Machiavellianism and psychopathy. Because as we know, you know, narcissists can sometimes be charming and glib and so forth and can seem agreeable on paper. They are more capable of engaging in sort of warmth and friendliness and tact in some cases. Narcissism is also positively linked to extroversion. This did not surprise me at all. Obviously there are introverted narcissists for sure, but I think that because of the focus on getting supply, narcissistic supply, it is very much oriented towards getting a sort of energy from other people. And what is extroversion if not getting your energy from other people? So that makes complete sense. Low conscientiousness was associated with psychopathy. This makes sense because psychopathy is typically associated with uncontrolled, undisciplined, and impulsive actions that make up the erratic lifestyle seen in psychopathy. Surprisingly, there was a higher openness to experiences for narcissism. There's a small but statistically significant relationship there. There was a moderately significant negative association between Machiavellianism and conscientiousness. This one was surprising to me because I would think of Machiavellianism as very conscientious in terms of wanting to make sure everything is arranged the way you want it to be in order to ensure your success. You know, Machiavellianism is quite correlated with self-discipline, goal-directedness, and deliberate action. And so the authors of the meta-analysis theorized that this could be because of Machiavellian people's non-adherence to moral rules and values, which in turn makes them score lower on conscientiousness, which to me begs the question of maybe we should be rethinking some of these tests. Those are all from the big five personality model and then from the hexaco personality model, there were negative relationships with honesty and humility for all of the dark triad personalities of a moderate to large effect size. Not at all surprising. These are not personalities that we would expect to have a lot of honesty or humility. And then aside from the other personality trait correlates, some other psychosocial correlates that they looked at showed that despite the notion that people with dark triad traits get ahead in life, that is actually not the case. They actually tend to have poorer psychological and social functioning than non-dark triad people. The worst outcome was for psychopathy, followed by Machiavellianism, and then finally for narcissism. So if you're gonna have one of the three, narcissism is the most adaptive and psychopathy is the least adaptive. Now, I don't necessarily agree with some of the conclusions they made about these psychosocial outcomes, like if it necessarily means that this person is less successful in life, but some of their findings were that 
Psychopathy was associated with a higher number of sex partners, more infidelity, and greater engagement in sexual harassment than Machiavellianism. For all three of the dark triad personalities, there were high scores in terms of aggression and delinquency, sex-related issues, interpersonal problems, and antisocial tactics. After controlling for confounding variables, so in other words, figuring out that it's not gender, education, or working hours playing a role in this relationship, they found that narcissism was indeed positively correlated with salary, so narcissists have a higher salary, and Machiavellianism is positively associated with leadership position and career satisfaction, meaning they do better in those areas, whereas psychopathy was negatively related to all of these outcomes. And this was really interesting to me, because obviously they say in this meta-analysis, well, you know, it's not true that these people succeed. They have all these different outcomes, these psychosocial variables in which they're not doing great. But all these things they just listed, you know, salary, leadership position, satisfaction with work, those seem like big outcomes. And it kind of begs the question, are they being a little bit biased when they say that these things don't help? Because it kind of sounds like they do a little bit. I was also surprised that psychopathy had negative relationships to all these different variables because we do have this image of a successful psychopath who can sort of fool everyone around them. And the study shows that that's not the case, that psychopaths actually don't do a very good job of doing that and do have negative outcomes in their life, which again makes sense if we take more of an antisocial personality disorder approach to psychopathy, which is very behavioral and very related to getting in trouble with the law. So these findings do show how maladaptive psychopathy really is, but it is at the same time something that demonstrates that narcissism and Machiavellianism may actually have some adaptive value in terms of career, at least. And despite this, the authors of the meta-analysis said that any positive effects of the dark triad personalities are clearly overshadowed by negative outcomes. You know, I, I'm not sure I agree. Let me know what you think about it. Because you know, like all these psychosocial things they talk about, like, cheating on other people, sexually harassing other people, those are things that affect other people. They're not things that affect them. In a sense, if they're doing well professionally, they have a good salary, they're doing relatively well for the harm that they may be causing to other people. So some takeaways and some surprising findings. Let's discuss, I have some questions, let me know what you think. So one question I have is, the fact that these three dark triad personalities are so closely linked together, does that mean that they might fall on a continuum where we have narcissism on the low end, Machiavellianism in the middle, and psychopathy on the other higher end? That they all sort of hold various levels of similar traits such as manipulativeness? Why do you think men score higher on all three of these? Is it that we socialize men to behave more in line with these personalities and in some ways we discourage and punish women from behaving in those personalities? Is it related to misdiagnosis and stereotypes that clinicians have about how certain disorders look? Low honesty and humility was a trait that was correlated with all three of these personalities. This isn't very surprising, but I'm just curious what you think about it. Although narcissism may be linked to higher salary and Machiavellianism is linked to greater career success, the dark triad overall seems to have detrimental outcomes for the people around them at the very least, as well as some negative outcomes for their interpersonal life as well. Does this challenge your preconceived notions about the dark triad being super successful because of their machinations? Specifically for psychopathy, does this sort of challenge the way you formulate psychopathy in your head? And can you think of any people who you noticed having some dark triad traits that prove to you that actually being like this is not adaptive or that it is adaptive? And if so, I'd love to hear some of those stories. So that was the second video that is sort of a soft launch into Hello Week this year. And then next week, I promise, we're gonna get into more of the actual mythology spooky stuff, because this isn't technically spooky, like I said, but I just wanted to throw it in there. If you liked this, I really appreciate that you have watched up until the end. You know, I know there's a lot of content out there on YouTube, and I just appreciate that you chose this channel to sit and watch during your free time, or work time, maybe not. <laughs> and I'll see you soon.